What a gorgeous day. I'm out on a, a lunchtime jaunt. I'm running, got some, got some chores to do. Running some errands on the, uh, on the 701. I haven't taken it out since my little Wales trip last week. It's been uh, over a week since it's been out and I've, uh, I was getting the itch. I was getting the itch and the sun was out. So I thought, let's fucking go. Let's, let's film the gorgeous autumnal colors of my town where I am situated and go and get some bits done on my lunch break. I can just eat while I'm working, can't I? <laughs> It's going good, the bike. I, I gave it a deep, deep clean when it got back from Wales. It was absolutely filthy. It was despicable. It, it, I feel it's so horrible. This is the first new bike I've had, so all of the li there's some little bits of flecks of dirt that are just so stubborn you can't get rid of them. I'm thinking about going to Screwfix and getting like a Dremel so I can really get in there and get, you know, keep it looking brand new but a part of me just wants to sort of let go of that thought of being able to keep it absolutely factory fresh because I'll just be too scared to ride the damn thing if the thought of cleaning it is just constantly looming over me but yeah, I will, I will endeavour to keep it looking fresh, don't worry oh, what a thing, what a thing, when I, I got it out of the garage and I started it up and I heard that exhaust again, I was like, fuck yeah, that's what, a, that's what a bike should fucking sound like. It's there, you, you can tell, you can tell it's, uh, it's got a bit of a uh, jalapeno habanero attitude with that can on it. A couple of things have been grinding my gears lately. The first and foremost is neighbours. Oh, neighbours. The age old issues with neighbours. So it was bonfire night a couple of days ago and we had a few fireworks in the garden and the neighbours opposite they start coming out of their conservatory in their dressing gowns what's going on? you're being irresponsible, you're being silly blah blah blah, your garden's too small like oh. so they just they put a sour note on our evening after they did that. We were done anyway. We came out and we were like, yeah, that's it, it's finished. But they still wanted, carried on and had a moan. And then they went back in. And then the next day, they, the geezer came to my front door. And my missus answered and went out to talk to him. And the tone, really aggressive tone, like, just telling her, you're wrong. Like, like, like literally, you've come round for a discussion. You can't just say to someone's face, you're wrong, I'm right. Because you're not, that's not a discussion at that point. You're just coming around to have a moan and bully people. So I went out there and sure enough, as soon as I walked out and there were two of us out there, his tone changed and he was much less, uh, I wouldn't say aggressive, but he definitely lowered the tone a bit. And he was just telling us, we, you know, that we were being silly for having fireworks in our garden on bonfire night saying that it was irresponsible and dangerous because it's too close to the houses and whatnot. It's like they're fucking, it's bonfire night for a start. It's one day a year and they sell their supermarket fireworks for God's sake. They're not going to fucking blow up your house, you moron. So he came round and had his, he had another moan. And I said to him, I said, what are you looking to get out of this discussion? And he was flabbergasted. He didn't have, he didn't want, there was, he didn't come round with any request. He was literally just coming over to have a fucking moan in our faces. So I, I said to him, do you want us to not do them? Do, should, we, should we do them at someone else's house next year? And he was just, he had no answer. It's like, what do you want? Because I'm not just going to stand here and let you fucking moan in our faces. Like, tell us what you want and fuck off. Yeah located him we heard we we heard his complaint and he buggered off then but yeah what what a fucking dick calling us inconsiderate and silly for having fireworks on bonfire night <sighs> what do you think if you've got neighbors most people have got neighbors our garden's not tiny there's enough space I've got videos of the fireworks and they're not going outside of our garden. They go up into the air and then he's complaining. 
He's complaining about the spent cartridges landing on his conservatory and at his front door. It's like, well, that's just what happens. The firework could have come from fucking over the road and you still might get a cartridge on your front door. That's just what happens on bonfire night. People let off fireworks. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. But yeah. He's a dick. Next year I'm just going to knock on his door and tell him, look, we're having fireworks on this day, you can lump it or leave it. You know, as human beings, we've got to put up with each other, haven't we? Sometimes people are going to do things that, that we don't agree with or we don't like. But that's just, that's life. Like, maybe, okay, maybe my fireworks annoyed him, but in the summer he's out in his garden with power tools every day doing DIY. That annoys me, but I put up with it, because there's, you know, there's no law against it, and it's his garden, he can do what he wants. So yeah, I, I, I don't like them. Every, they are, out of all our neighbours, we've only ever had to deal with them, because they come round and have a moan about stuff. They moan about the fence, they moan about, we had an extension done, they came for a moan, and sure enough, we have fireworks, and they come round for a fucking moan. There's just some people are just problematic and do you know have you ever noticed the people that are always constantly like i'm not being funny or i don't want a problem bloody blah, blah, blah they're constantly like reassuring you that they're not this and they're not that those are always the people that are this and are that have you ever noticed that and yeah he's one of them he's constantly like i'm not being funny or you know i don't want a problem and life's too short bloody blah, blah, blah i'm not this i'm not that and yeah you are mate you're fucking an annoying prick and you have a moan about everything. Oh dear. So yeah, that, that wound me up. <laughs> As you can tell. And it upset my missus. And to be honest, having someone talk to the, talk to your partner in a way that upsets them, it, it does it makes you angry. But you have to live next to the cunt, so you can't just go around and tell them to fuck off. Because you just it's not worth starting something. I don't want to end up on an episode of Neighbours from Hell. This was not meant to be a ranting video, I was just going to come out and record some scenic autumnal viewage and exhaust sound, but here we are. Maybe on the way back it'll have, uh, be out of my system then and I can, I can tell you uh, what, what else has been going on with the channel and life. Because it's, it's pretty good apart from, you know, I can't really complain at the moment, which is nice for once. I'm normally the first one to not appreciate the good things in life but i'm in the mood to actually you know it's it's okay at the moment <laughs> apart from cunty neighbors thinking they can tell you what to do but there you go <laughs> i'll catch you in a sec i've got to get some dog food this this hound is bankrupting me shortly followed by this hound but there we go What a beast. <laughs> so the other thing I wanted to talk about is the supposed demise of the 600cc sports bike. You, you could even say the 750 class as well with the, the Triumph Daytona and the GSX-R 750. They've been gone for a while now. And for a few years, the only 600 we've been able to buy was the Kawasaki ZX-6R. Even that was gone for a couple of years and they, they're just bringing it back for uh, 2024. Uh, slash late 23 and then today in Milan it was announced that the new CBR 600 double R is coming to the UK it's, it's been uh, it's been tweaked and updated and it's Euro 5 now so the super sports are still there and um, you know for a lot of time I think UK motorcycling uh, press and YouTube channels articles where you know wherever you get your motorbike news there's been mention hasn't there about the rise of the parallel twins and the death of inline falls and sports bikes in general you know people don't want expensive uncomfortable sports bikes they'd rather cheaper more practical easier to live with parallel twins but i f i fully disagree with that to be honest i think there still is very much a place for the 600cc super sport you know it's a place where you can get all of that top of the line technology and advancement but in a package that you can actually use on the road now granted most super sport bikes are way too quick for the road anyway you know they can do fucking 90 miles an hour in in, in second gear 
that they're not exactly the most practical things, but you compare that to 1,000cc sport bikes, and you can see where I'm coming from, you, you can get a lot more out of a 600cc sport bike on the road than you can a 1,000. And grant, you could argue that you can get more out of a parallel twin, but they're just not as exciting, are they? Fine, they've got, they've got good torque, but there's no screaming top ends. Those delicious soundtracks are gone with parallel twins and it annoys me when media outlets go on about the fact that these bikes are disappearing but they haven't fully disappeared we've had the ZX6R we've got the CBR coming back we really need to if we're passionate about these things like I am before I got when I was first getting into bikes I wasn't into them as a kid it was only as in my late teens I started to think hang on and the bikes that I lusted of were that they were the 600cc sport bikes. <laughs> and of course the supermotos later on. <laughs> but yeah, my first love was 600cc... <laughs> Sorry. My first love was 600cc-ish sports bikes. I test rode a Ninja, a newer one. I test rode a Daytona. I fell in love with both of those bikes. And I bought myself an old Ninja. And it wasn't as good as those... You know, technology had moved on. The Ninja I had was a 2006. And you know, when you're buying a bike of that vintage, the suspension's not what it used to be. The brakes have had years and years of corrosion on them. You know, there's just, the whole bike's just not as tight as a new bike would be. And you know, they have, the game has moved on. Um, but yeah, it's just, I'm so grateful that we have Kawasaki and now Honda as well, making these bikes available to us. And I think if we're passionate about them, we should be talking about them. You know, every time another fucking boring parallel twin comes out, we need to be banging on. Like, look, if, you don't, if you're sick of parallel twins, look, you should go and buy the, one of these. Let's buy a ZX6R, they're fucking awesome. Make some YouTube videos about it. God knows I have. And I will continue to. I cannot wait to get my hands on the updated ZX6R and the updated CBR. I'm gonna test drive them all, and I know I'm gonna fucking love them, and I'm gonna make YouTube videos, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get on my soapbox, and I'm gonna promote these bikes, because they are dream bikes. And I'm sorry, but a new version of the GSXS is no, it's not a dream bike, and it never will be. It's just not special enough. <laughs> this bike's pretty special as well. Supermotos and super sports are where it's at, if you ask me. <laughs> oh, I love all bikes, but I've got to have my favourite genres, and though that's them. I do need to try a 1000cc sport bike, though. Just to say I've tried it, you know. Because it's all very well having an opinion on it, but if you've never tried one, you need a bit, bit of credibility before you start slagging things off and saying one thing's better than the other. But yeah, let's fucking go. I, it is, I t I, I, did you see as well, the new Ducati Supermoto they announced? Right now is an absolutely awesome time to be a lover of sports bikes and supermotos. We are being absolutely spoiled and long may it continue. Long may it continue. And if you're with me, let me know. And if you're not, you know, what, what's, you know, what kind of, what's your love? What was your first love of the biking world? You know, what bikes you see them and you hear about them and they just get your blood pumping. It doesn't have to make sense even. Like, you can argue that super sport bikes, they just don't make sense on the road when you compare them to parallel twins. But, you know, riding a bike generally, a lot of the time it doesn't make sense. It's more dangerous. It's more expensive with all the gear and stuff like, it is quite an expensive thing, a hobby. Unless you commute on a scooter in London, it's an expensive hobby. You should be buying a bike if it's for that hobby, if it's not as so much of a commute at all. Get something filled with passion and excitement. And you know, I think super sports bikes are still pretty practical. You can do anything on those things. They are so, the road manners on those things are just incredible. But yeah, I'll, I'll leave you there. My errands have come to a close. 
thank you for watching and uh, thank you for listening to me rant and ramble. This, is, this YouTube thing is so good for my mental health when I actually put the effort in to do it. So I appreciate you watching and I'll catch you guys next time hopefully. See you later.